Hello and welcome to this tutorial about how you can make reflective sphere surfaces. Yay, even more reflections! Well, this time it's, I think, not as complicated as the planar reflection, but this time we have to use some external software, so um, keep that in mind. But everything we do is completely free, um, although I will show you one method which will use After Effects, but you don't have to do that. There are several alternatives that most of the time even work better. So let's get started. For this tutorial I'm gonna start completely from scratch, so I'm gonna delete this sphere and we'll remake this reflection. So first of all of course we're gonna um, spawn in a sphere and what we want to do is we want to set the rotation point to be in the center of the sphere and then reset its position. So we also might want to scale it by 0.5 or something and then align it properly. Yeah, this sure looks good. Now, since we're dealing with a completely reflective sphere, um, I usually like to uh, turn off SSAO on this one, since the light uh, reflects from the surface, so you don't want any shading to be there. The shadows that are casted by the sphere usually are enough to um, yeah, calculate the required shading. So now the next step is we will spawn in a camera and parent this camera to the sphere. Important is that this camera is exactly in the center of the sphere, which is also why we set the rotation point of the sphere to be in its center so that we can align the camera perfectly. And now let's just go into the camera, into the camera uh, tab and set everything to be zero. Then we have to set the field of view to be 90 degrees, exactly 90, nothing else, it has to be 90. And then for the camera size we need um, some square resolution, so it has to be the same for the width and height. Um, here you also have to decide how sharp you want your reflection to be, usually something like uh, 1048 will do it. So using a resolution of uh, 1038 will result in a 4K um, environment map in the end, so keep that in mind that 1048 will result in a 4K image. So let's just give it a test render, everything looks okay. Although I recommend to really exaggerate a little with the bloom and um, glow effect for this one, because depending on how strong your glow and bloom is, it might change the result of the specular highlights in the end, so you can exaggerate a little here, so yeah, this looks um, just okay. And now we can start saving the images we need. So what we're going to do is we're just going to render this image. You can ignore what is set here because Minimator uses the resolution we gave the camera and then what I recommend to do is make a folder where you uh, will save all the images we are going to create now and for the naming I highly recommend to start with um, I like to call it N which stands for North we are also going to make um, East, South, West top and bottom, but naming them properly will get important later when we're stitching all these images together. So you don't necessarily have to name them the way I do, you could also call them front, left, right, back, top, bottom or however, but you should know which one is which. So I'm gonna start with north. This also is important if you want to use uh, my workflow, which is probably the fastest workflow you could get uh, with my animator. You should start with north and um, then just save. You can overwrite the last one. And what you're going to do now is you're going to rotate the camera by uh, 90 degrees and going to do the same thing again. This time we are on the east side. Save. And when you're on the east side it is important that you now also render the bottom and top because uh, the method we're going to use to then convert these images to an environment map expects you to render the bottom and top image from the east side on so uh, make sure to do that. And once you're done that you can also render your south or back image and your 
final for me it is west. Once you've done that, I recommend uh, closing the selected camera window and let Minimator render your current scene. That's just because when Minimator displays a rendered image, it does not calculate anything else, so you see the uh, frame rate is extremely high, so it's not calculating anything anymore, um, so that it is not heavy on the CPU anymore. Because um, what we're going to do now is we're going to close all our stuff, and now we have to convert these six images we just made to a equirectangular image or an environment map. There are several names for it, although the use is a little different. But it is the same format uh, in which 360 degree images uh, and videos are rendered. So as you can see, I opened Blender, which is the first way to do this. Um, I'm also going to show you a website that can do that for you or how you can do it with After Effects. In my case, Blender just is the fastest workflow because I already made a project that reads in all the files I just uh, put in this folder. So it reads the files from this folder uh, directly into this project as soon as I open it. So I don't have to adjust anything. It already is made for me. So um, this is just the fastest workflow that's somehow possible. I'm going to upload this project so that you can use it for yourself. If you want to uh, put in your images, you just have to select this cube, go to this material tab and then uh, click through this list and just change your images and um, everything should work fine. Important is that you uh, take the top and bottom images from the perspective of the east side because otherwise it's going to rotate and uh, it, it's not going to make any sense. So when you're done putting all your images together um, in this project, if you are using Blender for this step, then you can just press F12 and it is going to calculate our equirectangular sphere reflection. You can see this is a 4K image and it took me 15 seconds to render and my computer really isn't the fastest one, so this is a quite fast um, method to get this. Once you have your image, you can uh, press image, save as, and then I usually um, just overwrite the last one I did. But now there's one more step to do. For this you'll need some um, image editing software, it really does not matter which one, it just has to be capable of um, flipping or mirroring your image. This is because um, we are working with a reflection so we have to flip uh, the direction of our image. Or with other words, just mirror it, so just flip it once and then re-render it, that's it. I like to call it uh, invert or something. Just um, just do that, everything should work fine. It really does not matter which program you use for that. And uh, now we are basically done. We can go back to Minimator. And then what we are going to do is we go to our Resource tab. And, uh, well, I'm going to delete this and re-import it. So we just have to add a new resource from file. And we are going to use our Equi Invert I just um, made. I'm going to tell it that it is a texture and now we can go to our sphere texture and select our equi invert. Well, so what you can see now is that our entrance in the reflection is here, but the actual entrance is there. So um, what we might have to do is rotate the sphere by 90 or 180 degrees. So now that uh, it matches with rest of the scene. So if you give this a quick render you can see that the sphere is pretty dark. That's because the sphere still is shaded and in this dark environment it's just uh, too dark to see anything. So you probably want to go to color and give it a brightness of something about 40 which I generally um, recommend you to do because you can see shadows on reflective, on fully reflective surfaces. Um, because you can only see what they reflect. So now it should already look a little better, and indeed it does. Now there's one more step I would recommend to do, which is adding some specular highlights, some even more highlighted highlights. 
This is fairly easy, just duplicate your sphere, parent it uh, to the original original sphere, um, delete the camera inside the sphere, reset all its position, rotation, scale and stuff, so it is at the exact same position, scale it a little bigger by maybe 1.01 .01 or something, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna subtract a little bit of its color so that just the um, highlighted spots keep being visible maybe some of the carpet um, yeah press OK and now tell it to glow and only render glow and now this should just work uh, fine now you can see that we highlighted the torches and a little bit of the bright part of the carpet a little so that it looks a little more metal-ish. So yeah, and uh, that's basically it. You can render this from any perspective and it should work um, just fine. But as you can see, we still get these gaps on the glow. That's because the glow is a pixel-based effect and we don't get the full torch in the top image so it does not calculate the effect properly. But avoiding this is a little bit more complicated and requires a method called overscanning. Um, and this requires some math to be done and is a little more complicated. So if you want a tutorial for that, just leave a comment and I can uh, totally do that. So for those who are um, happy with using Blender, um, well, the video's over for you. Now I'm gonna uh, show you how you can do it with the website and After Effects. For both of them, I recommend first stitching the images, uh, the six images we had together in some image editing software. For this, I'm gonna delete the last we used and I'm gonna create a new one. We'll need a width of uh, 10, 48, multiply it with 4 and a height of 10, 48, multiply it with 3. Hit enter. You can delete whatever was in the background. So now you, we can import our 6 images. And in the case of GIMP, I recommend using some uh, la helping lines. You can uh, just add a horizontal line at 50% of the image. And then we'll start with North for that I will um, tell it to only affect the active layer, which in my case here is North. So I can grab my North layer and place it at the very right side in the center. Just make sure that there are no pixel gaps, because otherwise you will see these gaps in your image later. Then you will continue that with all the other images. So for me the next one would be the East image. And once you're done with the four horizontal images, you can now um, stitch the top and bottom image. And here is why it is important that uh, yeah, you remember where your east image is, because this is the image on which you're going to orientate now. So and once you're done with that, you can save your image as something like cube map and then you can go to a website called um, 360 toolkit and this website allows you to convert cube maps to equirectangular images and as you can see here it's important that you go up and down on the east image because it expects you to do that so then you can load in the image you just made me this is here and now this is going to take a while and then it will offer you a download and once it's done you should be able to open your equi rectangular image and it should look just the same what you can see though is that it is not as accurate as blender does it so you might want to overthink using this method. Also using this website you will be limited to I think 8k images maybe because uh, everything above 8k is just too much for the browser to handle so um, yeah everything above that won't be possible with um, this option. And now to quickly cover the After Effects uh, method 
just import your uh, cube map image, uh, put it into your composition, or not in the render one, just in the normal composition. And that's not what I meant. So here we are. And well, you might want to lower re your resolution a little because it's not that important that you get the preview right. Then you're going to search for an effect called VR Converter. Just put it on this image and then go from cube map to equirectangular uh, two by one. And after some time, you see that your image uh, is done. This method is a little more precise than the website, um, but still it can get exhausting over time to having to stitch the images together so that you can convert it then in After Effects. So the Blender workflow definitely for me is the fastest one. And it also is the most precise and the cheapest one. So uh, you don't have to pay for any expensive software. So yeah, but that's it for the tutorial. Um, I hope my English was good enough to explain everything properly. Um, if not, you can of course ask me in the comments. And of course, if you have any further question, you can ask me for them as well. But that's it for today. And bye.